It's a new year and it's time to start off a new group build. This is so far just a buddy build between myself, Mark at, at uh, Event Horizon Models, and Jared at Rebels at Cloud9. We appreciate Star Wars Fine Mold kits and we are not ashamed to admit it. There's a lot to like about these kits. Everybody's really you know, crazy for the Bandai kits, but that's why we decided, hey, you know, Fine Molds was quite the, 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 the best company for Star Wars kits until Bandai came along, and in many ways, they still are. Uh, they, they, they do have a lot nicer attributes that the Bandai kits are lacking. Uh, for one thing, weathered pre-weathered decals you know that that's that's certainly something that uh, is the bandai has not really taken care of very well so yeah uh, we certainly do appreciate fine molds and their efforts you know of course they're a much smaller company and we were lucky to have maybe one kit a year Bandai has been spoiling us with multiple kits per year so I am going to light my kit. I am... I'm not going to go totally crazy with this kit, but I do have some aftermarket parts. Now, the thing that I don't like about this kit is, you know, the back thrusters here, the engines are totally opaque. So, on the Starship Modeler uh, website, uh, starshipmodeler.biz, I purchased this. It's a clear resin piece and it has a photo etch overlay and this goes on to uh, the back of this ship here. Okay, neat stuff, neat stuff. And not only that, so now the, the detail here is actually pretty nice, but it's still, you know, it could be a bit better. I mean, for what you get, it's not bad, but uh, these these vents here and these other vents here, these are you know pretty nice. I have to admit, they are nice, but they're even nicer if you get them replaced with uh, replacement uh, photo etch and resin set. So here, what I need to do is drill these out completely. Okay, make it a big hole. And then these uh, turbines, or whatever these are, can fit up inside there. From there, put the, the photo etch on here, so it make, gives it a lot more depth that way. Should look pretty darn cool, I think. That's going to be nice. Now, the Fine Mold 72nd scale Millennium Falcon has figures to put in the cockpit. Unfortunately, the 144 scale does not. That is that is really unfortunate. So, the cockpit itself is it, not too bad. You know, this kind of just sits on here, the console does. There, just kind of sits like that. Unfortunately, those seats are pretty lonely. I have not found any sort of aftermarket replacement resin, you know, Han and Chewy or anything like that to put in here, unfortunately. The instructions call for the interior to be painted black, but that's not really totally accurate. I think maybe like a dark, dark gray might be a bit better to do this cockpit. Something that's really nice. So, okay, okay, so again, these are... Who made these? Millennium... Models, I think they're called. Yeah, Millennia Models International. They did this and uh, this, uh, the other part with the. Yeah, Millennia Models did these two, and I got both of these on Starship Modeler. HDA Model Works has these nice decals. These decals have. There we go. These are decals for the cockpit interior. I'm not totally sure how these are supposed to fit on to this this part here, but I have to figure this all out, I guess. So there's like the, the front console. I think this part here goes between 
the this the the two front seats. There's that, that middle console there. It's a little bit cramped there. It needs to be a little bit more opened up than that, but you know whatever. <clears throat> and then you got the side panels. And I'm not sure which is which, but I think one of those are is, is going to go here on this side here, and the other one's going to go on this side here. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. And then you get the back wall here. You got this uh, back wall here uh, that poses a problem. And you got these rear wall panels here. Looks like all six of these are identical to each other. That, I believe, is going to go along the inside curve here. Now, the Mon Knight kit as well has this, this uh, doorway here in the back, and it's recessed. This decal here lays flat. I mean, you could try cutting the door out, but, you know, whatever. The door is supposed to be closed, and, it's, and if it's closed, it's supposed to be kind of flush here. So what I, what I need to do is try to figure out, I thought about maybe um, putting in some plastic, some like a sheet styrene, cutting it to size and sliding it in there. Um, my friend Gary recommended putting maybe some tape here and filling the hole with some liquid resin, some UV curing resin, letting it dry and then peeling off the tape. That might also possibly work, I'm not, I don't know, but we'll, we'll see. Now, I said I'm going to be lighting this kit. So, the problem posed is, uh, first of all, I got this thing here. This We're not using this, but this is made to be, it's just going to fit. You got several points of contact for the glue here. You got these little ledges here where it fits perfectly. Now, this clear resin piece is not going to do that because, you know, if you have that stuff in the way, it's not going to work. So this goes here. All right. Now, of course, this, the hamburger kind of uh, sandwiches here, but you're going to, you see, this is going to totally block the light. You don't want that to happen. So this middle part here where this locator tab is, all of this has got to go. None of this is, uh, is going to be really good to have laying around here. So I'm just going to get my, my crappy nippers here. All of this needs to go goodbye. Oh, you know, this is a little bit too crappy. <laughs> I can't, it won't even cut. So this crap here, we're going to just cut this all out. And then remove this. This all needs to go. The same goes for this back here. Whoa! That went flying. Pachoo! Oh my gosh, I'm just, this stuff is flying around everywhere. I'm gonna have to figure out a better way of doing this. I'll probably do that off camera. Just kind of aim it directly into the, uh, the, the trash can. But yeah, so you know, this is this can be removed. Don't really need all those locator tabs. I guess it's not a big deal. So yeah, we just want to have this lit up on the inside here. So I'll probably come back to here and use my, my rotary tool to sand all this down. I don't have that with me right now because I'm at the in-laws place. But yeah, so I'm going to have the back lit up. Now there's also, oops, these, uh, there are these front headlights, and I'm thinking I might, I might have those lit up as well. And where are the runners for those? There we go. Now they're not totally accurate because, okay, well first of all, both of these are numbered 18. But these are actually a little bit different from each other. Now the headlight is supposed to be in more on both side, both sides. This is a little bit more central, so that's not entirely accurate. 
on the inside of like that front bay thingy, I noticed on the Empire Strikes Back, my friend sent me a still picture, these are lights right here. These two round wagon wheel kind of shapes here, these are lights. So I think I might have some lights going into here as well. And for that, these are actually fairly large. And I'm thinking maybe, maybe what I might do is, I, I might try just uh, casting this, this whole piece, just replicating it in clear UV resin. Maybe use some Oyumaru. And uh, if, if you're new to my channel, the Oyumaru is this, uh, cla this plastic clay. You put it into hot water, Oyu. And then you can uh, shape it once it melts. You kind of uh, you can shape it and to the you know whatever shape you need it to be before it cools off and, and it becomes hard again. It's reusable and you can use them for making molds of things. And something small like this, I would probably just use Oyumaru to make a replicate piece. So yeah, I'm gonna. I'm thinking about maybe, maybe I'll do that, and then that way this this whole part here is supposed to glow, so that might be pretty cool. Here are the docking rings. These are pretty nice. The docking rings got a little bit busier when The Force Awakens came out. And when it comes time to building my Bandai Millennium Falcon in this same scale, I think I might get the, but they, I know on Shapeways they have replacement docking rings. I think I might just use those instead. Uh, my, when I first saw that uh, the movie The Force Awakens, I kind of liked it a lot. I mean, I didn't hate it. I thought it was, it was, you know, halfway pretty cool. And I even made a video on defending it because I, with its shortcomings, I would rather have something like that than uh, the the prequels. Um, as derivative and uninspired as it was, at least they actually felt more like Star Wars movies. But since then, especially with the Force or the the Last Jedi and all that crap, it's really kind of made us all nostalgic for how terrible the prequels were. Because <laughs> as bad as they were, they're actually they had a lot better ideas than uh, than these uh, the the stupid crap that they're doing. And in my opinion, the Last Jedi pretty much destroyed Star Wars. I mean, I'll just, hopefully if they will just make movies like Rogue One or something, I'll be happy with that, but the actual continuity, they ruined Luke Skywalker. I don't want to see a reboot or anything like stupid like that. Um, I knew from way back when Disney first acquired Star Wars, I, I figured they were just going to focus on marketing, and when they decided to do movies, I'm like, well, that's just a cynical cash grab. I said it at the time. I did not run out and buy the Force Awakens DVD because my appreciation for that movie was really, honestly, it was hinging on what they did with the follow-up movie. And it's The Last Jedi is so bad, I've never even bothered to see it. I refuse to watch it. Not... I'm just not interested in it whatsoever. Uh, so anyhow, this part here fits into here. Okay. Yeah, my gosh. Uh, unfortunately, one of the locator tabs kind of busted off, so you gotta be careful. But it's almost like, look at that. It's almost like a, not quite a snap fit, but this really keeps the pieces in place. I'm really, I'm really liking this. It's great. I mean, it's just, look at that. It's not totally a snap kit, but that is pretty nice. Anyhow. Okay, so the problem is, if I, if I really wanted to like this kit, now, I do have, like, photo etch and such that goes for the Bandai kit. This Fine Molds kit, well, the seats are just not quite positioning the the proper way it's a little bit cramped in here now if I had a light down in here using this doorway if I had like some sort of a light shining you would just get like this light this bright coming from the hole in the ground uh, in the floor and it really wouldn't look very good I don't think so uh, if I attempt to light this kit 
I'm, there's no photo ash. I'm not going to drill holes in the back or anything like that. But what I think I'll do <clears throat> is... It depends on these decals here. And again, where are they? Here we are. I cut out a corner here, soaked it in water just to confirm. These are clear. The white here, these, these, this is clear. So anything that is kind of like colored or whatever, it's going to be shining. At, you know, it's, 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 it's the whatever painted surface you have, it'll come through. So if I paint these parts in here, the inside of the interior of this cockpit black. If I put this down, you're going to lose all this white here. So what I need to do is paint them white first, then put these things down. I think, I think, I think, I think, what I will do is paint it white, and then I will go over uh, the places again with that, uh, that luminescent white glow-in-the-dark fluorescent white paint that I have, that uh, arpeggio of blue steel paint uh, that is from uh, Gaia Notes. If I paint the surface with that reflective glowy white and then put these decals down, the black on the decals will block the, the, the luminescent part of those decals, or of, of the paint, and then the white here will just shine through, it'll look glowing. I do not want to have the 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 light shining from below because we're well, going to be looking inside here you don't want to see like a big floor lamp on the bottom here so in order to kind of hide it a little bit what i think i'll do let's get this off again doink there we go what I think I'll do is put a light here, and I'm going to use uh, like a UV light to trigger the fluorescent white paint. I'm going to have to cut a little channel here to have the wires going through here, but I'll just attach the wires along here. And then from here, I'll have those, those decals coming down, and then the light should hopefully kind of fill the the cockpit with a bit of a glow and hopefully it's going to catch all of those little lights that are on the, the, the consoles and such and cause them to glow. Hopefully it'll work and we'll see how it goes. But I need to make sure to reduce the, 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 the voltage on that light with more resistors though. So I'm going to have that coming through here. I have some blue LED tape, the strips here. Uh, yeah, so yeah, this is gonna go goodbye. So yeah, that I bought at uh, what was it from uh, Paragraphics or something like that. Got it from Cult TV Man when I visited the the Wonderfest in Kentucky in 2016. I've had that blue LED tape. I've since learned that I can just get like a whole big spool of of LED tape just buying it directly from HDA Model Works instead of uh, buying the LED tape through through Paragraphics. At the time though, I was just kind of just barely getting used to the idea of maybe lighting up model kits, and it was later in that that November that I started working on lighting up a model kit. Uh, anyhow, I'm rambling now. Let's just get started with some construction. I don't think this is going to be the best way of, of doing this, but I don't know. I'll, I'll slowly kind of eat away on that stuff and I'll get back to you. I'm going to cut this all out now. Yep. So here we have a test fit with uh, clear resin. Looking pretty nice. And so... There's going to be a part here that, you know, the sidewalls here, all the greeblies and all the, the nice detail is going to be fitting on top of that. So, that'll also kind of be a guide to keep this from kind of sliding around. But, anyhow, you can see here, again, this is just rough uh, cutting out here. I'm going to 
make this a little bit smoother. So I don't know if this is going to inter interfere with any of the, the light coming through at all. But uh, this is <coughs> going to be you know, made a little bit clearer. But it is now opened up inside there. So that is great news. So I will not begin with the uh, cockpit as the instructions would like me to start with. Uh, instead, I suppose I can start with uh, the sidewalls here. Here I'm going to show you a really nice detail that Fine Mold's got right, that Bandai overlooked. Now, the instructions here, the way that the, it's, it's drawn, it makes it look like there's an empty hole here, but as you can see in this part, that is not the case. There is no empty hole here at all. This is solid, and that's actually for the best because I don't feel like uh, detailing it inside there at all. You wouldn't be able to see anything, plus there might be some light leak anyways. These parts just kind of go together. Now, there are these little teeth here on either side, these little tabs, that when you put this in here, kind of locks into position. Now, the cannons here swivel. This whole part here swivels. You're not supposed to glue this at all. So what I think I'll probably do is uh, when I get home I'll put some grease in there and uh, make sure that this is uh, you know it stays pretty well lubricated in there so that you could easily uh, swivel this around. That is really really cool and this is something that the, the Bandai kit does not have. So yeah the, the cannons here the, these, these whole parts swivel, and that's on the, the top and the bottom. So, score one for fine moles. <laughs> that's nice, I think. Very nice. I think I could go ahead and just glue these together. Um, there were these little, you know, in injection uh, bars going through the middle here that I, I had removed a while back, and I just got rid of the, the rest of the the remnants of that stuff. So, yeah, it, it calls to paint this in here black, but it's not going to be necessary at all. All I have to do, just get some glue, and uh, just glue these together. And I'll go ahead and prepare both of these. So there's this little locator indentation here, and I've got to find it on this where it corresponds. Here it is. And so now this lines up with the holes, and there we go. This is in position. I'll just let that glue. I'll go ahead and do the other turret ring. So yeah, I do like some of the aspects of this kit, especially because this is the Empire Strikes Back version. I think it's only a matter of time that Bandai hopefully, hopefully might release an Empire Strikes Back, or at least the New Hope version of the 144th scale kit. Um, I think they should probably be able to reuse a lot of the same parts. Just the sidewalls, greeblies and such might have to redo those. But in all, hopefully they'll come out with it. I would I would definitely want to buy that. As it is Force Awakens. <laughs> I just I don't even want to I don't even want to see the the rectangular um radar dish anymore. I mean, I thought it was cool that, that they made it different looking, but it's just As I said, my appreciation of uh, my appreciation of that movie was hinged on what they did with the the follow up movie. If it was just going to be an, a copy of Empire Strikes Back, and they ended up doing that to an extent as well. Ooh, ooh, ooh it's not snow; it's salt. Uh, yeah, whatever. 
So, next. Okay, so now this is the bottom. What I might do, actually, I can... Ah! I can go ahead and glue the landing gears into into, into their, their place here. Um, this cockpit. I don't have to worry about that for now. Put this all away. Yeah, let's, uh, let's find the... Uh, landing gears, I can get started with that. That's got to be really easy to do. I plan to have this in flight. So you're going to use uh, number C25. That's... Here we go. This is C25. So you just got this really long locator tab here. It's peg. So we got 24, 25, 35. I don't know which one's which. I might have to look. And in fact, I should uh, file this down. Get my little file guy out. So this is part number 25. That should go into the middle, okay? And so which way is which? It's like those details here. Square details go in the back. Hmm. Yep, I'm not gonna do any landing gears at all, so this is going to fit in here like so, okay? in place. Next. Flying position 35. 35 will go here. Here's 35. And does it even say where 24 goes? I don't think the instructions say that. It's weird. I mean, it's obvious it, that's the part that goes over here, but it's not telling me that, I don't think, in the instructions. Okay, so which way is which with this guy here? It looks like this little, um... Yeah. Okay, it's smooth on this side, and it's got these little teeth on this side. The teeth go on the outer side here, so we are going to put some glue here. And then there. All right, so again, I mentioned it's obvious where part 24 is, even though I don't see it indicated in step 15 in the instructions. Kind of weird. Oh wait, no, it does say that. Yeah, sorry. It kind of split like up here and then down here. So it says that part 24 goes here instead of the landing gears. So again, I'm going to use a file here. There we go. And splurge some of this glue into place. So those teeth again go on the outside. Just put the glue in there. There we go. So it is really neat how, even though this is technically not a snap kit, it is rather nice how firmly this holds on to the, the the locator tabs and the locator holes. Okay, so 30. Are these identical? Yeah, 
It would seem that they are. Okay. So the back two right here. Hmm. Yeah, so yeah, I think it was in January or February. I think it's January. They are releasing a vehicle collection version of the Empire Strikes Back Millennium Falcon. Uh, Bandai is, and that's pretty cool. There. Alright, so we're going to put the those parts on the outside. So... This neat detail in the landing gear bay shall be forever obscured. Oh my. Let's put this into place. It's not wanting to fit in all the way. I'm not sure why. I don't like that. I should have done a test fit first, huh? Alright. Um... Before this glue solidifies, I'm going to pop this out and take a look at this again. See what's going wrong. Maybe, maybe these just need to be... Enshortenated. Is that a word? I don't think so. But it's my word now. We're going to enshortenate these guys. See if this fits back into place. The rough teeth go on the outside, and it's still, the fit is not quite the way I would like it to be. That's kind of odd. Huh. Hmm. I need to get another, a better hobby knife here for the family's home. Because this box cutter is all I got right now. I don't like it. It's kind of clumsy. I don't know why that's giving me such problems. It doesn't really want to fit in all the way. I'm no certain. I don't like it. Let's let's try the other one. See how this other part goes. Yep. Alright, what's that gluey part? Let's file this down. There we go. Alright, I don't see why this wouldn't work. So let's just do a test fit first. Oh. Clean that up. There's like a little bit of flash, maybe that's what's preventing this from cooperating. I don't know. I do know. Alright. Hmm. Well, again, strange. That is strange. I'm sure I don't have this backwards. No. No, that's not the case at all. It's just like, I don't know. Maybe these things are kind of preventing it from sitting flush inside there? Could that possibly be the problem? Well, you're not going to see this crap anyways, right? Let's go ahead and just remove this. Get rid of these pipes as best as I can, given that I don't have my rotary tool with me. Let's just cut those nubs off of here. Maybe that's these things are what's the culprit. Ah, oh boy. Maybe it's just a... 
issue with the parts not totally being the perfect size. There we go. This kit is a gift, actually. My wife's friend, her friend since like uh, elementary school or so, uh, she took her son to the She's Local Hobby Show. This is like way back, um, I think before my daughter was born. I think. It's been, it's been maybe at least 10 or more years. And uh, so she, she went to the She's Local Hobby Show on the, the year that this model kit first came out. And she bought this for me as a souvenir. So that was super nice of her. Now this kit goes for quite a lot of money. I'm sure once Bandai were to release a 144 scale original classic trilogy Millennium Falcon that that would uh, lower the price of this kit considerably. But you know, maybe it's just supposed to just kind of sit there like that. Maybe maybe it's not supposed to go in all the way. Maybe it's just kind of I don't know. Maybe it's not supposed to be totally flush. Oh, these are flush, though. These are totally... They, these fit in perfectly. Only these are a problem. Well, maybe I'll just uh, deal with those later, I suppose. Let's get on with the sidewalls. Step three, actually, is the uh, radar dish. And I guess I could go ahead and do that now. Instead of uh, moving on to the, the other stuff. So... Yeah, before I do the sidewalls, I guess I can do this. Alright, so, Tamiya Cement. Let's put this... Dab this in the middle here. Yeah, in there? Okay, I guess it's in there. Hmm. Well, this might be kind of tricky. Let's put this into place, hopefully, without causing any problems. There. Cool. Alright, that is in place. Now, uh, these two parts here fit together. So they, they fit together like so here. Now, what I think I'll do before attaching to here, I guess I can do that now. There does not seem to be any up or down. Wait, no, there is. So the problem is, I don't know if that's even going to be noticeable. I guess the... So there's like this little T mold here, and I think that probably goes on the bottom. The instructions don't really say how it goes. I just assume that that's going to be on the bottom. Alright, so... I want to put these into place first. Let's put glue here, here, and here, and here. There. There. Great. All right. Now that that's in place, More or less. Well, the glue's not dry yet, obviously, yet, but whatever. Alright, we got plenty of glue on here. Now we're going to put these into the holes. Hmm. Which way's which? I do wonder. 
Well, maybe that is on the top. Yeah, it seems to fit better that way. Okay. Well, the T mold goes on the top. The arms seem to like it. They seem to be happier that way. Alright, let's set this aside. And move on. Move on, move on. Alright, so first things first. And, yeah, so the gun walls, I'm just going to leave that alone. I'll take care of those, uh, the actual cannons later. There are these parts here that go here. And I think what I might want to do is prime those black. Prime the other parts gray. And just have that kind of black in there for, like, some, some depth. That might be kind of nice, I guess. Maybe a little bit of pre-shadowing. So C26 is the first part. Where is C26? Here we go. Oh! Alright, looks like these are going to be identical parts. On the top and the bottom. So, here's one part. That goes there. And there's going to be another one on the top. And the little 45 degree angle part here goes in the front. Okay, so there will be no mistake at all. There. Let's glue this into place. I'm sure the glue's going to need to go around the edge here as well. And I'll just line these up. There. Great. Let's do the other part on the top part here. Okay. Get them in the locator tab holes. Locator holes. Whatever the hell they're called. I don't care. Line them up with the uh, Pegs, and they are now in place. All right, swanky, swanky, swanky. So it looks like the side walls are mostly going to be fitting into the hole uh, on on the bottom part first. Now we have D nineteen. D19. That is this part here. We got two of these that go on either side. Both are identical parts. Okay. Hmm. This might need to be shaved down a little bit. Sand it down. There. Just a little bit. Oh, that's kind of ugly. There's my knife here. Let's make that more attractive looking. Get rid of this excess here. <laughs> nice. All right. So this goes in here like so. There we go. All right. That goes in layer. All right. So cement time. There. Cool. Now we're going to do the next side. Just the same way. Now, this middle part here, I'm going to 
maybe hold off on inserting that because that's the part I want to maybe light. Put little lights up inside there. That might be pretty cool. Now let's just dab these contacts with more glue. Make it all nice and melty. There, cool. Time to put these sidewalls in place now. I'm just going to smear a bunch of glue all along here on the side. First things first, we got this part here. That needs to go in place. There. Next. Now, of course, obviously, I've already cut these guys off the runners. I am just, just putting them in place right now. Oops. What's going on here? That needs to hang down. Does that hang down? Yep, it does. Okay, gotta be careful here then. Oh, that kind of almost snapped. Let's just make sure this is pushed down all the way. We need to make sure that these are going to be lined up properly. We have another one right here. Oops. It's a little bit too much glue, but I guess I'm alright. Let me uh, get a tissue here or something. Kind of smear this around a little bit more. Get this up here. There. Kind of wish I had some extra thin at the moment, but again, yeah, forgot to take it with me. I thought I had left a bunch of glue here at the in-laws' place last time I was here, but apparently I did not. I I don't know. I just I can't find it. I don't I don't know what happened to it. So maybe I'm just going crazy. Maybe I'm already crazy. In any case, that part is done. Let's do the other side now. Burp. Oh wait, no. Not yet. Boy, is this... There. I'm really kind of concerned about that. There we go. I've got this part here. This needs to go here in place. According to the picture, it looks like this little uh, circular guy here goes on this. Hmm. Yeah, before fine molds came along, the best Star Wars kits were Anagrand. Or, I'm sorry, not Anagrand, uh, Argonauts. Uh, officially licensed resin kits by... Uh, Argonauts was a, like a sub-name uh, by uh, Aoshima. And... Yeah, I had no idea until the guy from Hoshima actually told me that. He's like, oh, wow, really? That was you guys? He's like, yep, that was us. So they had these really nice resin kits. The only one I have is the TIE Interceptor. I have seen the X-Wing and the Y-Wing floating around. The Y-Wing, actually, I, I just saw it a few days ago at a book-off plus in Maibashi. And it's a little bit expensive. I don't really think it's worth getting it. Unless I really want to get it just for the collector's sake, but I don't see how, why I should bother. I already have a stack of three Fine Molds Y Wings and a Bandai X Wing, or a Bandai Y Wing as well. Okay, now let's do the other side. Gotta run glue all along here. And build the sidewalls. Mm -hmm. Okay. Neat. Alright. Just looking at the instructions to make sure I don't have any of these upside down. Just need to put this into place and push it all the way down. Make sure they're all the way in and then all the way down. Okay. Boom. There we go. The next part is this one here, and you know what, hold on, no, 
probably. Yeah, this needs to go in first. Did I put glue on there? I'm going to put some more. There. This needs to go down. Make sure you got the the little V's pointing up in the right direction. This needs to go like so. Okay. And this larger piece kind of fits over the other piece. So, hold on a second. Alright, this goes down there. Now this larger piece kind of overlaps this other piece, so you got to be careful with that. I got to be careful, okay. Cool, there you go. So you got like this, uh, this modification that kind of, uh, you know, hangs down over there. That's pretty neat. Great. Now, let's do a test fit here. Okay, that's it. That's how it goes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Keep in mind, you got V's. They're they're not A's, but they're V's. Okay. So these these V shapes, like right here, they they need to be sticking, pointing downwards, not pointing up. If they're pointing up, you got them on backwards or upside down, I should say. Okay. That does it. Sidewalls are complete. I'm just going to leave this model alone for a bit. And let this dry. Let the glue dry. Hopefully kind of weld the plastic parts into place properly. Okay. Oh, sounds like they're back. There we go. And then lastly, I got this thing on the back here. What was that? in place. Get that plenty of glue here on the back side. There. I'm not going to connect this just yet. Actually, I'm going to paint this separately. Put a bunch of masking down there to prevent, uh, you know, just to expose the plastic so that this will glue down properly. So, yeah, there we go. Alright, let's do a gun turret here. So, this kind of faces down. The one with the locator peg kind of, uh, is on the bottom here. Here we go. Let's uh, dab some glue onto here. Put this into place. There we go. Let's see if I can have this uh, in such a way that I could just move it. It'd be posable, maybe. That'd be nice. We'll see. So it's the next day, and we got these nice sidewalls put in place. 
And so I think I'm going to finish the video. I'm just going to do one more thing here. I think probably uh, just doing a dry fit here. I got these little locator tabs. Very nice fit. I'm really happy with how this fits. I do like this a lot. Um, there is a bit of a gap, though, that I think I'm going to try to fill in. I don't like that. It's, it's kind of wide. I do want to fill that in. So, which means that I would like to have this attached before um, painting. I want to have the, the gap filled in and such. I'm going to apply glue along here. And place this here. Put this into place. So when I get home from uh, vacation, I'm going to get busy. And actually, I can probably dab some glue here. There we go. I'm going to get busy with painting and such. However, priority first. I want to definitely make a, uh, a priority on the the, the the Klingon Katinga ship. So this is oh crap! I just got some glue on my finger. I just touched it. Oh well, I can sand that away pretty easily. Anyhow, um, yeah, I'm gonna finish this video here. So hopefully, look forward to more updates on this the Katinga the flanker and uh, the tomcat and the eagle and such so this other stuff you know i'm hoping to get a bunch of stuff done earlier this year just like i did last year so thanks for watching may the force be with you live long and prosper and so long thanks for all the fish goodbye